Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit to give all glory, honor, and praise to you, God the Father, to you, God the Son, to you, God the Holy Spirit. With your love, you have saved us. With your power, you have raised us. With your blood, you have bathed us. With your mercy, you forgave us. And with your grace, you've given us your amazing new life more abundantly. Guide us, Father, today to give to you more cheerfully, obey you more willfully, serve you more skillfully, pray to you more cheerfully, and respect your commandments more fearfully. In the name of Jesus. I want to go into this from the scriptures, Genesis, the third chapter. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and did what? ate it and afterwards she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he what he ate it and then God comes around and verse 16 is the key scripture that women need to understand in today's time because this is your battle every woman's battle is you can have it all every man's burden is Please God, not people. Or please God, not won't man. Praise God. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. This was a warning to let her know, praise God, because of what you did, every woman after you is going to have labor pains. And ladies, you know that uh, these labor pains don't just happen when the child is born. How many know it can be labor pains training up children in the way that they should go? That's why the woman's job is so very important because she is the catalyst to train the children starting in the playpen so that she don't have to visit them where? In the state pen. But if she is not sold on the importance of her role in the family, and it's a critically important role. If we think we're wiser than God, God will do what? Let us become fools so that we can be made wise. And not only did he say about the childbirth pains, he says, yet your desire and longing will be for your husband and this is God speaking. You can work your neck if you want. And he will rule with authority over you and be responsible for you. You've heard me teach in a three-legged race. You have to decide how you're going to walk. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? He's given man a role, praise God, to say, well, baby, we're going to start out walking. And then once we learn how to walk, we'll start running. But you can't start out running if the other person is walking. You can't fly into flying. you got to crawl. you got to walk. Then you got to run. And God is trying to get something in our spirits. And then he shifts over. I've given you Proverbs 31, just some key verses. It says, an excellent woman, one who is spiritually capable, intelligent, and virtuous, who is he that can find her? Again, this is King Lemuel's mother reminding him about the importance of making the right choice who you choose to marry. Now again, praise God, you've heard me teach before that the biggest decision you make in your life is giving your life to Christ. Somebody give God praise if you understand. Salvation is the greatest miracle. But after you give your life to Christ, and if you decide to get married, the Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. The second biggest decision you'll ever make is who am I going to spend the rest of my life with? And that ain't nothing you need to get drunk on and go to Las Vegas and say, I do. 
The Bible says no one builds a building without first sitting down, counting the cost to make sure you got enough to complete it. To make sure you got what it takes. And it's not so much trying to find the right person. Somebody said you got to be the right person. And going out there sowing your oats with a high body count, then, you know, Uncle say, well, when you get ready to settle down, find you a good version, trust me, it don't work like that. You've been taught that when you sleep with somebody and the world calls it sleeping, but it's really pound town, when you do that, you're not just sleeping with the person, you're sleeping with everybody that they've ever slept with. And many today, because of a fallen world, not only will they sleep with men one day, women one day, dogs one day, and if you go to Mexico, donkeys the next day. It's people out here that need the Lord. Now, this is a mature word. I'm sorry, it's the truth. No, I'm not sorry. This is the truth. And God wants us to get it together again. Now, one of the things that I, I like about Will Rogers, he lived a generation ago, and he says there's three types of lies. You've got lies, you've got damn lies, and you've got statistics. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they say the majority... And people love to use the word the majority when it's 51% and 49% or 50.1% and 49.9%. I just know it's 51.1% and 49.9%. That's the same. But people will say the majority believes in this. And right now we're dealing with some shocking statistics on fatherless homes. 70% of our children are being born out of wedlock. 70%. How many of us know a father can make all the difference in a family? Why don't you give God praise if you know a, a little bit about this? Two point five million fathers who are on their own a single family house and only 400,000 fathers are in the home. So 18% of the single parent population is recognized in the United States are headed by single fathers. Key statistics. Number one, 85% of the youth who are currently in prison grew up in a fatherless home. Somebody say 85%. Seven out of every ten youth that are housed in state-operated correctional facilities, including detention, residential treatment, came from a fatherless home. Thirty-nine percent of students in the United States from the first grade to the senior year of high school do not have a father in home. Children without a father are four times more likely to be living in poverty than children with a father in the home. Number four, uh, children from a fatherless home are twice as likely to drop out from school before graduation than children who have a father in the home. I can say this in love, true purpose. When a boy gets to be a certain age, Ain't nothing going to get him straight if he got a real father. It's like, I'm going to tell your daddy. <laughs> Trust me. When you got a real man, I ain't talking about a man from the waist down. That's the problem. We got too many trying to be men from the waist down. Yes, sir. A real man is a man from the waist up. Yes, and we need more real men in the world. Girls who live in a fatherless home have a 100% higher risk of suffering from obesity than girls who have their father present. Teen girls from fatherless homes are four times more likely to become mothers before the age of 20. 
57% of fatherless homes in the United States involved African American black households. Hispanics have 31% fatherless rate, white and Caucasians they claim 20%. And I can go on and on, I can give you all these statistics, but the point I'm trying to say is that God wants us to celebrate today every victorious, virtuous woman who has made a decision that they're going to do it God's way instead of the world's way. Somebody say, making the transformation, making the transformation. from happy woman, from happy, woman. Happy, life. happy life, to happy God, to happy, God. Happy, life. happy life. And again, God's heart is, is, is challenged today because his word says, if any man or woman be in Christ, we are what? New creations. The former things have passed away, and, and behold, all things have become new. We have the new walk. We walk by faith and, and not by sight. We have the new talk. We speak the word and not our circumstances. We have the, the new uh, call things that are not as though they are. And what God's heart's desire is for the church to do is to do its best to, to, to put the family back together again because that has been the battle plan of the enemy in our generation. Just 40 years ago, just a generation ago, the majority of children being born were born in a house with a mother and a father. But the enemy has come along and he's given us this short-term gain that has come with long-term pain and saying, ladies, you don't have to do it God's way. You can have it all. You don't have to wait to get married to have children. You can have it all. You can go out in the evening, put the food in the pan, come back that evening and still love your man. And we know the father's. He says, take my yoke and learn of me. But if anybody think you're wiser than me, he says, guess what? I'm going to let you become a fool so that you can be made wise. Yes, and the generation has come up. He's let us do it our way. Yes, and Satan has come through and just ravaged the family to the point to where it's almost the exception and not the rule to see happily married folks. Now, we see plenty unhappy folks. Oh, just talk to some of the folks behind closed doors and say, hey, man, if you had to do this all over again, would you do it? Why you want to go there, Pastor? <laughs> and then behind closed doors, we have this, 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 this movement that, 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 that wants to do it that way. God gave us the answers to the test, ladies. He told us in Genesis 3.16, now to warn you about this, there's going to be labor pains. But secondly, your desire is going to be for your husband. But he's going to be responsible for you, and he's going to be the leader of the family. And we have many people today that are told but not sold yes, on God's plan. I want to make my own money. I don't need nobody taking care of me. I can do everything just as good as a man. God made Adam and then he made Eve. He made her from the rib. And she a, 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 can do more things than a man. And again, God made her from the rib for them to walk side by side together. Not for man to, to dominate her. He didn't make her from the head for her to dominate man or from the foot for man to trample over woman. But from the rib that they can walk together in love. How can two walk together except they agree? But if you're in a relationship and somebody says, hey, 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 I don't care what God says. This is a new day. I make 50 cents more an hour than you. So now I need to call the shots. And these stuck on stupid people don't realize what you make on a job. That ain't nothing but seed. God is a God of seed time and harvest time. God can take one little kernel of corn and put it into a ground and it can grow a stalk. And on that stalk, it has thousands of other coins. That's why we don't call it corn. We kernel on the cob, we call it corn on the cob. 
Because every one of those little seeds has the potential to grow a whole nother stalk. But if you're going around saying, hey, I make 50 cents more an hour than you, yes, things and change, God will let you become a fool so that you can be made wise. And any man that has a virtuous woman be, would be a fool to try to hold her back. This woman is gifted, praise God. My mother was a housewife. But what I loved about her, praise God, she could take whatever she had and she could make a dollar out of 15 cents. <laughs> she knew how to make some things happen with the money that she had. And it's not how much you make, but it's what God can do with what you got. And we got to understand, ladies, God ain't trying to hold nothing back from you. He just wants the very best for you. And there are many out there today that's working not just one job. Some of them not just two jobs, but some three jobs trying to make ends meet. Because they've gotten out here on a plan that was not in will alignment with God's plan. And I say to all the ladies who realize that God gave you a mission, praise God. He looks at a man, the Greek word for father is pattern. Not only is the man the seed to procreate you, but he is your protector, he's your provider, and he's your priest. Just like God is our protector, provider, priest, and procreator. But he looks at a woman, he says, I've given you the most important role, praise God to make the house a home, yes, sir. take care of the children, and if you decide to get married, love your wife and submit to his leadership. Love your husband and submit to his leadership in the Lord. Yes, but just like in the garden, when the enemy came to Eve, oh, did God say, you're going to surely die? Come on. God just knows if you eat this, you're going to be just as wise as God. And if he was really a good God, he would want this to happen, girl. And then she looks at it. It was good to the eyes. Boy, I can just imagine how good it's going to taste. And boy, this man and told me, this serpent and told me, it's going to make me just as wise as God. And she ate it, and then she gave it to her husband. And when I read Proverbs 31, and it says, who can find a virtuous woman? One of the first scriptures it says, in his heart does he safely trust in her, for she will never do him any harm. Somebody give God praise if you got a woman like that that you know ain't going to never purposely do nothing wrong to try to trip you up. And the beautiful thing about a virtuous woman, somebody say, V, she's got victory over the world. Now again, the battle that women are having in our generation, y'all, uh, uh, one victory is over feminism. And the feminists are saying, hey, uh, this is my body. And if I want to get rid of this baby in the second trimester or even the third trimester, I can do what I want to do with my body. And I already came with an amen already with me today because we got too many uh, uh, closet feminists in the world. And the point I'm trying to say, y'all, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit where? In his mother's womb. We already know that the baby is alive in the mother's womb. And the longer you wait on something like that, the more painful it is for that life. And God is saying we got to do better. I was looking at Planned Parenthood. Y'all, they say it's between 12 and 20 forms of contraceptives, depending on what you want to call contraceptives. And abortion is not a birth control method. Can somebody give God an amen on that? Amen. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. And if you're going to be to the point of doing things your own way, at least 
protect the babies. Don't come here. And again, the first thing people want to holler, well, what about rape? What about molestation? What about incest? Yes, yes, any woman that goes through that deserves to do what she chooses to do in that situation. But when you look at the facts, that's less than 2% of the abortions. 98% of them are convenience abortions. My career, I'm a career woman, I ain't got time for that. Well, you should have kept your legs closed. <laughs> now you ain't got time. And I say this in love because God is saying we got to do better, church. We have to realize God ain't trying to hold nothing back from us. He just wants the very best for us. And you get to have victory over these things. You know, and then again, Satan will come, don't need no man. And here comes the lesbian thing. Golly. I heard a woman say, gosh, how, how, how could a, a, a man or a woman not understand the beauty of them being together? But the devil will always come with short-term gain but I tell you about the long-term pain. And again, I say this in love because every one of us had a past before we got saved. That's why the word says if you're in Christ, you've got to not be conformed to this world, but you've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if God can take an old school player and transform him, Trust me, I know he can do it for you. If he did it before, he can do it again. And things, when I was a child, thinking like a child, acting like a child, oh, uh, you put away childish things because you understand it's a bigger picture. I go back to Eve, you know, when she ate the fruit, the devil gave her the short-term game, but he didn't tell her about the long-term pain. Didn't tell her that every woman after you gonna have labor pain. Didn't say nothing about that. Didn't say that men gonna have to work from the sweat of his brow. Didn't say nothing about that. Didn't tell Eve that Cain was gonna kill Abel. Didn't tell her nothing back that. Didn't tell her that her desire was gonna be for her husband the leadership role. Oh, I want this role. I don't care what God says. I want to be the leader. And now that I make more money than you. You got some folks in the world, y'all, you can't tell them nothing. Yes, sir. If they make a dollar more than you an hour. Things and change nowadays. I'm the head of the household. And look how our children have suffered. Children that have grown up without a mama and a daddy. Yes, sir. There are certain things that a woman needs to learn from her daddy. Oh, I turn my back on y'all. Y'all all quiet on me. <laughs> Need a protector. Yes, I've been teenagers coming by blowing for your daughter. You think a, a boy would blow for my sisters? You better get yourself in here so I can vet you. <laughs> and ask the questions. And with my dad, you're probably going to see his shotgun in the corner just to let you know, don't do nothing to my daughter that you don't want me to do to you. But if a woman has no concept of what a real protector is all about, what a real provider is all about, uh, what a real priest to teach her the ways of God is all about, she'll run out here in the world and give her most precious bodily asset to people that don't have no care about you. Talking about I was in love with you and if you really love me. Yeah. And God's heart is broken, y'all, when he see that there are more children being born outside of marriage than inside of marriage. I'll say it and I'll say it again. God created sexual intimacy 
for married folks. Can I get an amen on that? Or are you still told but not so? But pastor is so good. He made it good. Because he made it for marriage. As the joke goes, he wanted it to be so good. He was talking to Gabriel one day and he got 50. He said, Gabriel, give me 25 of those super sensitive nerve endings. Gabriel said, 25? You haven't put 25 in nothing, God. You're gonna, what are you going to do? He says, Gabriel, I'm doing something really special for marriage. I want this to be so good that when they do it, they're going to be calling my name. And if you marry, it's a right for you to say, oh, God, because he made it for you. But if you out there skipping and tripping, you calling God's name and gets God's attention. And God is saying, this is what you call me for? You bumping and grinding with somebody you just met, not knowing that every time you sleep with somebody, you're not just sleeping with them, but everybody they done slept with. And then in the next generation, you're wondering why your kid's so buck wild. And just like Eve, you'll get to the point to say, God wasn't trying to hold nothing back from me. He just wanted the best for me. He wanted me on my wedding day to get together with the person that he chose me to be with. And you consummate the relationship. You experience intimacy together. But if you've been hanging out with Craig and Ray Ray and Big Earl, <laughs> don't get with Pookie. <laughs> All of a sudden, one man can't satisfy me. I wonder why. And God is challenging us as a body to get our act together unless the Lord builds the house. They labor in vain that building. So she's anointed, y'all. She, she understands that she's not falling for the devil's short-term gain that's coming with all this long-term pain. Somebody say it's worth it, it's worth it. To, do it God's way. to do it God's way. And the next thing, if she's going to be that virtuous woman, somebody say she's into Christ. She's into Christ. I'm talking about being in it to win it. The word says if you're into Christ, you are a new creation. The former stuff passed away, and we got to behold that all things have become new. And again, every one of us got a past. That's why the Bible says there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. If you knew better, you do better. And God ain't charging you on nothing you did before you gave your life to Christ. Somebody ought to give him praise for that. Most folks in the world today don't have no idea what their body count is. He asked us a couple of weeks ago, what's your body count? You should have seen the heads ducking. <laughs> but it's not just what you, not just what you do, what you think, what you say, what you do, what you eat, and what you inherit it. And some of us inherited some crazy stuff from our mamas and daddies and grandmamas and granddaddies and great-grandmamas and granddaddies. And you got to break that curse. The question is not what will happen if you do it, but what's going to happen if you don't do it. Having a promiscuous mother or a promiscuous daddy. Again, I'm reminded of the two twins. They grew up in an abusive house, and, and the father used to get drunk and, and, and beat the mother. And then he'd beat the children. And, and then when they grew up, one went to the West Coast, one went to the East Coast. One had a beautiful family, beautiful wife, beautiful children. The other one beat his wife, beat his children. But they both gave the same response. With a father like mine, what else could you expect? Now, the Heavenly Father gave his son's life to break every generational curse. Yes, the Bible says, cursed is he who was hung on a tree. Jesus was hung on a tree to break generational curses. Somebody say, Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. My heavenly father gave his life for me. 
to set me free. So God the Holy Spirit can live the new life more abundantly in me with victory. And if you got that victory, give him praise today. I don't care what the world says. I'm victorious. He can do it for me. I know he can do it for you. He can turn your life around and have you looking at women as your sisters in Christ and not conquests for your notch. Got that, man. Got that, man. It's embarrassing. Even with people that call themselves Christians. How buck wild we can be sometimes. As I run through this quickly, somebody say reverent respect. respect. And that means respect for God. If you choose to get married, respect for your husband, but also respect for yourself, ladies. My mother was such a mentor to young ladies, and Sister Lou can tell you about this, because when young ladies get fast and start trying to grow up too quick. One of her first pieces of advice, baby, who gonna buy the cow when they getting all the milk for free? Huh? And I quote Brother, Brother James, he said that uh, even the Girl Scouts know how to sell their cookies. <laughs> but we in the day and time, folks just giving away for free. Oh, you took me and bought me a deal, a meal and Papa Do's. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, Ali. And God is saying, come on, ladies. We can do better. Seventy percent of children born out of wedlock. When a father and a mother makes all the difference. And it then got to a point where people don't even feel bad. Your conscience can get seared. You know, we've been doing it like this, and, and now the new law says, hey, we need to give women the right to, to, to just uh, abort these babies no matter when it is. And I would rather stand alone with God and be judged by the world than to stand with the world and be judged by God. I knew it. A lot of folks ain't going to like it. Oh, you're not with us. He wanted them. You actually, yeah, you're yeah, absolutely right. I am one of those standing up for these children because they need us to protect them. And I say this in love: if you're not going to do right, there's too many forms of per, uh, uh, contraceptives. You start with abstinence, but the last one is not abortion. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. That lets every child of God know that you were alive in your mother's womb. And there is no condemnation. Don't even allow the devil to think about anything that you did before you came into the light of Christ. That's what the Lord says. What did he tell the adulterous woman? He says, woman, where are your accusers? Neither do I accuse you. Now that you know the truth, do what? Go and sin no more. Yes, sir. <laughs> She's trustworthy. I got to get through this. I'm at a stopping point, but I say this in love. The most valuable compliment a man can give a woman, a woman can give a man, is not how much I love you, but I trust you. Who can receive that today? You got somebody that you can trust to do the right thing. You got something special. She usurps not God's absolute authority. There's only one authority in this world that's absolute authority. That's God. The Bible says all authority is given by God. The powers that be are ordained by God. He's absolute. As a pastor, I'm delegated authority. As a president, he's delegated authority. Any type of leader, a mother, 
a father that delegated authority. If you don't take care of those children, how much so they're called child protective on you? Delegated authority. But we do not usurp God's authority. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. But the reality, it was already settled when God said it. And what we have to do is to get in line. She's outstanding. You don't find a person that's going to follow God all the time. So that when you find that you've got something special. She has an understanding heart. And lastly, she is a special woman. If you can receive it, give God praise. Oh, Holy Spirit, I love you so much. Father, we love you with all of our hearts, and we hear you loud and clear challenging us to make the shift from happy wife, happy life, to happy God, happy life. From happy woman, happy life, to happy God, happy life. Your word says unless you build the house, we labor in vain that build it. And Father, from here to forth, we're going to trust you even when we cannot trace you. We're going to follow you even when we cannot find you to know that you're not trying to withhold any good thing from us. You just want the very best for us. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Amen. amen. If you're not ashamed to praise his name. Make a draw for noise.